interview with you because it's, uh, you know, I haven't talked to many females on my show. Uh, I think the only other female that I've ever talked to was a singer named Nora Jean Blues, or Brusso, who uh, is a blues singer. So you're like the, <laughs> the second. <laughs> well, good. Well, yeah. Well, good. We'll, we'll uh, shake get up for you here. Oh, well, that's that's cool. I, I, I do appreciate that. And I, I did hit the record button, so uh, I'll, I'll do like a little introduction and then we'll just kind of go into it, okay? Okay, very All good. Right. All right. Hey, everybody, this is the... This is Frankie Slauson here, and it's 2014, and it's a new year, and uh, with the new year, that means I get a chance to do a new interview. This interview was supposed to happen earlier this or this past year, but uh, uh, I'm assuming this uh, this person was very busy at the time, so she wasn't able to uh, to uh, do this then, but uh, she's able to do it with me now. Uh, she is the wife of the late, great John Belushi, and who doesn't know John Belushi but here is his uh, his wife, Judy. How's it going, Judy? It's going very well. I'm happy to say I'm on the West Coast this time, which is a great deal warmer than my home on the East Coast. And although I miss it, I'm happy to be in the sun, I like to say. Yeah, I, you know, I recently just moved from Minnesota to, to South Dakota, and the weather over here in South Dakota and Rapid City is a lot different than it is in northern Minnesota. Well, you're way south. Yeah. <laughs> you're way south of where you were. <laughs> it's probably only like 30 degrees or something today, I bet. Yeah, we got a little snow today, but not too bad. I mean, it's not like in Minnesota where it's like below zero <laughs> every day, you know. During winter well, they're time. both lovely states. Yes, yes. And uh, how are you doing overall? I mean, it's great to, it's an honor to be able to chat with you. Well, thank you. Um, well, as you said, I am actually very, very busy. For some reason, the Blues Brothers world uh, uh, is... Is very active. Um, we've got several projects going, uh, all in pre-production, so that means that you may never see any of them. <laughs> but they all seem um, to have a lot of support and potential. Uh, I think um, the one that might come along, so who knows? We've, they've all been around for a while. One is a Broadway uh, uh, show in which we would take the Blues Brothers film, the, the Blues Brothers, yep. to Broadway. And uh, we're working with uh, John Landis, the original director of the film, and this would be his first Broadway show. And um, I think he's just so creative and so exciting uh, as an artist. I'm real excited about the potential of working with him, I have to tell you. And um, Danny, and he would do a script. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have lots of other ideas. But first we get our, uh, our, our ducks in a row uh, with uh, producer Michael Cole, who has uh, quite a, a history of, of getting things done, so it, it, it feels good. Oh, that's good. Um, and let's quickly, I'll say the other two, which are a, uh, or are there three? Um, <laughs> the, there's a, a Blues Brothers television show also. We've partnered with uh, Paradigm uh, Talent Agency here in Hollywood um, and putting together a package uh, for that. Um, and then um, we've got um, a continuing uh, effort, actually, which is we have a Blues Brothers Review band on the road, uh, which is something we've sort of been escalating slowly. And um, we have quite a nice tour coming up this year, and that's exciting, too. Oh, yeah. It seems like uh, any, anything to keep the Blues Brothers legacy alive is what you're striving for. Well, you know, I, um, <laughs> um, uh, I love the characters. Jake and Elwood. Um, I worked with them a long time, and, and in fact, when we first started, I I divided in my mind Dan and John versus Jake and Elwood. And when we like first you know did albums or a T-shirt or a, a book or whatever, I was always with people working with me would often say, "Well, here's a picture of John." I said, "No, that's Jake," you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, and I think. At first, people had great resistance to the idea that someone else would play one of these characters. But that is sort of my goal, is to to let them be seen for what they are, which I believe are, you know, one of the many great American fictitious characters, you know, yeah. full of fun and energy and, and uh, you know, enough of the antisocial uh, bad boy side, but ultimately perhaps inspiring. Oh, yeah. 
And, you know, it's kind of funny, you know, with the Blues Brothers legacy, since we're talking about Blues Brothers uh, to start things off, uh, a lot of people don't talk about the second movie that, that was made, Blues Brothers 2000. Uh, well, I wonder why that is. True. I wonder why that is. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it didn't, for, obviously, for, for one, didn't have the, in, and it could not have the impact uh, of the first one just because, I don't know, once something's been done, it's, you never have that same energy behind it. And likewise for the new things we'll try to do. But, um, you know, I guess on some level it just didn't resonate with people. I mean, I think the music was definitely great. Um, you know, I think we could have done better with the storyline myself. Yeah, I, I, I actually enjoyed it pretty well. I, I watched it, you know, once on DVD, and then uh, I did uh, listen to the soundtrack, and I thought the soundtrack was pretty good. Not oh, as, I think the soundtrack was great. I mean, yeah. and then look at all the musicians on there, and that, if nothing else, that's such a, an historical album. Um, but it, but it was I think it was a very good album I, I no doubt about that the film is was clearly lacking in some level yeah. I, I when I revisit certain scenes you know because they pop up online or something there's a lot of funny things in there um, and and I guess we <laughs> I just did it we kind of want to associate Blues Brothers with funny but in fact they're not you know comedians it's not a comedy um, it's more of an adventure action musical uh, which has a lot of comedy in it yeah um, and. Uh, do you yeah. do you think that uh, having John Goodman in the second one was almost? Uh, do you think a lot of people thought that he was trying to replace uh, John Belushi in the in the second one? Well, you know that was a, an interesting situation. Uh, I know Danny's first reaction was, and I think mine was too, maybe not to replace Jake. I, I think it was just sort of a, um, um, a mourning slash grief you know, loss kind of reaction yeah. that you didn't want to replace, that you can't replace someone. Um, but again, see, these are characters, and I, I think probably we might have been wiser to just, you know, um, maybe we needed to wait a little longer. I don't know. But um, Danny, you know, really wanted to do the film, and he loves the blues, and he loves that he can work with it and bring it to people's attention and uh, everything about it, I guess. And and so, you know, um, so he made the effort, and... Um, the results are in the pudding. Hey, yeah, and, and he, did a, he did a great job no matter what. I mean, I, I think uh, I think uh, had you guys redone the, the film and had somebody else, I don't think, it, it, I mean, it may have still had a good flavor and stuff, but I think have John Goodman in there, because I'm a, I'm a big John Goodman fan, just like I am a John Candy fan, and just like I'm a fan of your uh-huh. your your late husband and everything. And, and the thing is, it's just that, it you know, it... You, you you get people when you get people in your movie that have has had a great career and uh, is successful, you you do get a lot of uh, of movie magic so to speak when it comes to that because yeah. you don't have to worry about them not knowing their lines or anything like that. You know, <laughs> and, and John, well, I think yeah. I just actually kind of in our conversation realized sort of the thing, uh, which is that I guess as long as Danny's doing it. It probably isn't, you know, and it never will be, clearly, um, that he'll work with another Jake. He, it's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, and, um, but, but because he's crossed sort of from, he, he's, he's blurred the lines more between Elwood and Danny. Um, and uh, I think, you know, as characters, when you have two new people, then it's a whole other game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, with, with the Blues Brothers, uh, now that uh, people know know about you a little bit, they, uh, I don't know how many people know that you were actually the wife of the late, great John Belushi. Um, what was he like as a human being when he was alive? <laughs> well, he was... Um, I think that the core yeah. essence that people saw in him when they watched his performances tells them would tell you a lot. He was funny and he was had an amazing energy. He was very powerful. Um, I've of, often reflected late on how powerful he was and how in, in, he still resonates, not just with me, but with people in general. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely the most powerful person that's been in my life. Um, um, and then he, uh, he, he was not those characters. He, 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 I mean, given his, his the media per, per, uh, portrayal of his, his lifestyle, it would seem he was a blue door Jake, and at times, you know, he was, but but he wasn't that character that, you know, he had a very different being. He was very bright, he read a lot, he had a great sense of history and politics, he had um, great instincts, he 
He was a good businessman. Uh, he was a terrific friend. Uh, you know, frankly, he was a wonderful husband. Very caring, loving, concerned, protective. And, uh, you know, obviously there were lots of negatives, but yeah. uh, but the balance was, was so much more on the positive. And, and that's why when uh, he's talked about it, it gets so confused. Yeah. Oh, I, I understand. I mean, it's, you know, because a lot of people think that, you know, they, they know they, they can just judge a book by its cover, so to speak. They, they would probably think like, uh, well, he was a wild man on the stage, so he's probably a wild man in real life. And, yeah. Yeah, he he was into drugs and stuff, but uh, you know maybe there's a reason for that. You know, other than well, success. certainly. Uh, there, I mean, there was the generation um, <laughs> and social part of it, but yeah, it was deep. Obviously, more than that as well. But you know, that's all stuff that only he could ever really put his finger on, and and probably couldn't, or you know, hadn't been able to. But um, you know, I kind of given up on all that. that yeah. You know, it's it, it's. His life is uh, bookended. You know, it's it's done, and um, and you know, it's, there's value in contemplating what happened and looking for what was good and what lessons can be learned and how to correct the negatives and all that. But at some point, you know, you just move on, and and uh, it's not that he's passed. He's with. He's still here, and he's here in these various forms. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he created so much to work with. Oh, sure. Uh, it's, it's amazing, and, and actually, the other project, another project I'm, I have is a film on John with um, Steve Conrad, who is a writer, director. Um, he most famously wrote, um, well, recently, Walt, the Walter Mitty movie that's out right now. Oh, yeah. And in Pursuit of Happiness, which was a Will Smith film, yeah. um, he directed something called The Promotion, and um, he's written many more than he's directed, but... Um, he so understands this film, and we have put our faith in him with you know the other producers and myself. And um, right now we have uh, two two actors on board. Emil Hirsch uh, will play John Belushi, and oh, wow. Emil is in that movie called Lone Survivor that's just come out. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, he was Clyde in Bonnie and Clyde on the television miniseries. He was the lead in Out of the Wild. He's He's a young actor who's very talented, done done a lot of good work, and is, you know, finding his voice and all that, and so we're very pleased he has come on board. Oh, wow. And yes, he can wiggle his eyebrows. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and I was just told today that, uh, although it was announced, but not but prematurely, uh, that Miles Teller will play Dan Aykroyd, and Miles is in a new movie right now, they just got a lot of raves at Sundance with Zach Nor uh, Na Zach Efron. Oh. Uh, it's, it's a buddy film, and I, I don't know the name of it. Yeah, I'm not too familiar. Uh, but that's that's cool, though. I mean, it's 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 just neat to hear that you're you're trying to keep his his legacy alive. And and uh, uh, I was I don't know if these uh, rumors were true or not. But if uh, John would have still been alive, was he actually supposed to be in the uh, the Ghostbusters movie at all? Yeah, the, it was written by Danny for John and and uh, him, as as with spies like us. And um, unfortunately, he didn't get to do those roles. Yeah, yeah. But I I heard that he was supposed to play like uh, like Bill Murray's role of Peter Venkman. Yes, he was yeah. Peter Venkman. <laughs> yeah, I, I think once Danny came in and Harold, um, uh, well, Harold was always going to be in it. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there, there was some re reworking. Sure. Yeah, and, and, and you know it's and, you know I'm happy with the way it turned out and everything. But, oh, it's you know, great. Who who knows? You know, I mean, that's why you know I kind of wonder like what John's life uh, would have been like had he have lived. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm sure your Never life know. your life would have been totally different than it is right now. I'm sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we all and you know I mean Billy Murray's life would probably be different. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you know, but you know, I'm sure in that regard. I mean, Billy is the talent he is, and if it hadn't been Ghostbusters, it would have been something else. Sure. But um, when someone leaves us, yeah, it often leaves us wondering what would have happened. I mean, it, it's you know somewhat wasted energy. He did have so much potential, it seemed, and um, so much to explore still. But he lived so fully that um, you know you don't. Who knows? 
maybe that was his timetable. I sometimes feel he knew he had a short timetable. Yeah. It's kind of like how Chris Farley went, you know. It's like, I mean, because Chris Farley, everybody knows that Chris Farley was like a, a wild person. And, and, and in a way, in real life, he kind of was too because he liked to party. And that's kind of how his life ended, kind of. Yeah. Well, sometimes if we live by the sword. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Myself, I never got into drugs or anything like that. I'm 30 years old. I'm a young guy. I'm just mm-hmm. big on... My well, biggest thing is pop culture. I just love pop culture. And, and anytime I can yeah. talk to somebody that has to do with pop culture or something, to me, that is that is the premise of my show. Pop well, culture. well, I am heavily immersed in pop culture. <laughs> so I've come to the right place. Yes, yes, you have. And, and, and I think it's cool <laughs> that you built friendship with Dan Aykroyd and, and uh, whoever else that you've uh, known that... Uh, has built a lot of legacy in pop culture and that's in the movie industry or film or you know i, I think that's great uh, how how long have have you known dan Aykroyd since like since the early days or uh danny came upon our scene uh during the uh, previous to saturday night live um probably about a year before because we had um the connection from with second city chicago and toronto was strong, and John had hired Gilda Radner and uh, Paul Schaefer and uh, some, some other folk to work on a Lampoon show, that, and uh, both a radio show, which I worked on with him, and another stage show, uh, and, and so that that Canadian uh, connection started happening uh, like in the early 70s, and um, Danny had come down to visit, and that's when I first met him. Actually, John met him in Canada on a trip, but that's when I first met him, and shortly after that, he, he moved down. And uh, I guess he moved ultimately when it was before, just before Saturday night started up. Oh. And um, so that's a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, before. yeah, a long time. But I'm sure, you know, a lot of, it's nice to have those memories and it's nice to talk about them because, you know, it's like, I don't know, I mean, a lot of people say that back in those days, you know, were, were <laughs> like really good days. Like there was some, probably some hard days too, obviously, but life was simpler then, you know. We didn't have to worry about the economy. We didn't have to worry about, gas going up. We didn't have to worry about Oh, we had, in 74, there was an oil embargo. We were worrying about, we were doing comedy about, about that then. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I might be off in the year, it was 73 or 4, because I, we were doing the radio, this radio show. And, uh, so, you know, yeah, it, it, it was simpler all in all, but, uh, you know, you've always got, it's always, as Gilda said, it's always something. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a, mm, great to have these memories and all, but you know, it's it's also great just to be able to be in a position to sort of uh, be able to put some of this out there, and, and for me, it provides a creative outlet. That's where I'm trying to go, okay. <laughs> and to be working and still, uh, and and it is very nice when you are working with something which people respond so uh, warmly to and enthusiastically to. Um, so- so, and it does, um, in turn, actually, you know, spark their memories and, and, and good feelings. Oh, sure. And, and, and I like and, and, to think that the Blues Brothers, is, uh, you know, the brand represents, you know, good music, good time to people. Yeah. And um, never can get too much of that. <laughs> but what uh, what got you into the entertainment uh, business? Was it because of being married to John, or, or were you always uh, well, into it? Well, uh, we met, I mean, I was... 16 and he was 17. We weren't <laughs> thinking entertainment business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but as as we developed as people, we were thinking that we were artists and 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 you know the medium he chose was the stage and I I was into graphic arts originally. Um, I had all, previously in my previous to re- think, be, determining I was an artist, I was thinking I was going to be a politician. So I. Um, I had honed a lot of organizational skills, <laughs> which come in handy for producing. Oh, sure. And, and um, yeah, I was, like, you know, president of my class and vice president of school. And it wasn't until later that I realized, much later in life, I realized that those had nothing to do with, like, getting, you know, into the political scene. I mean, in terms of what politics is, although, of course, there's a lot of organization and fundraising to do with it now. But you know, it really has more to do with exactly that end, the producing end of things. Um, so... Um, I, you know, as we moved through our lives, I mean, we just worked together on various levels, but I, myself being behind the scenes, okay. uh, you know, I, I designed the 
t-shirt, the logo, original logo and t-shirts and books for the Blues Brothers. I did the album covers. I, we had a company, and I pretty much managed it. We did a tour. There were lots of different people doing lots of things, but I was one of the coordinators and handled various things. Uh, we dealt, we would, I would probably deal more with talent, uh, making sure that everything's good for everyone and, uh, you know, all those kind of things. Oh, that's, that's interesting. And, and uh, were you always kind of a lover of blues music, or, or did that just happen because of the Blues Brothers? No, no, you could say there have been moments I hated the blues, but, <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess. But sometimes it's just like, you just want to go, please, no more blues. Um, and when John was around, I mean, because <laughs> yeah. he could do it all the time. Um, no, he learned, uh, he, he kind of got into it during the Animal House shooting, and um, you know, that's when I became aware as well, and you know, suddenly, suddenly there it was. Yeah, yeah, because they were doing. Uh, Danny and uh, John were doing like tours of, as the Blues Brothers before the the movie even came out. I no, mean. no, no. Um, they they didn't. They created the Blues Brothers and did some performances with other yeah. bands in New York City. They put the band together for the Saturday Night Live show. Oh, okay. And, and I think that was seventy. I can't remember if it was seventy six or eight. <laughs> But uh, I think seventy six, and um, and then from the TV show, an album deal was cut, and and then actually the band was secured as a band because it wasn't the full band on the first TV show. Oh, okay. And after Universal Amphitheater performance with Steve Martin, which is where they recorded the album, they went on tour. Okay, yeah, because I remember their briefcase full of blues album. Because that's on mm-hmm. Spotify right now. And that's, that was the first album that was recorded at Universal. Yeah, it's a good album. It has a lot of good music. Yeah, it's a, it's a short, yeah it, it was. It's short, really but good. it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it, was an, it was an average uh, length then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I enjoyed it. And I think it's uh, it's just kind of neat, you know, that you can find it online now. I mean, you know, even if you want to purchase it or you can find it on, there's a thing called Spotify now on Facebook that you can... Oh, you can uh, find almost anything. I yeah. mean, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's good and bad. Yeah. It's good. Uh, um, you know, I mean, I, mean I, think, I think the end result is as good. It, it, obviously, musicians and the industry have to, and are still struggling and reshuffling to figure out what happens. And I can tell you from my own experience that um, for good, well, until about five or six years ago, whenever these things started happening, um, I received, you know, quite a bit of money from the albums, and uh, and when Napster or whatever the different online <coughs> things started up, that, that dropped to, I'd say now we're getting about a, a 25th of what we used to get. Okay. Yeah, I'm I mean, a, really significantly, yeah. and I might even be overemphasizing what we still get. It's it's amazing that you know it, it pretty much took all the profit away <laughs> from 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 us. Yeah, well, uh, I I would hope that you guys would still get some type of royalty nowadays. Well, I'm I, not. It's not a you know terribly sad deal. I mean, it's I, obviously it's great to make money and <laughs> and um, the work was put out and you know yeah a product was made and you know whatever, <laughs> but um, in the big picture. In, in, Know, this, the, the rewards that have come from doing all this have have have, have been good. Yeah, well, that's that's cool, and you know, and I want to say uh, personally before we before we let you go, uh, thank you very much for letting me do uh, this interview with you. It's short but sweet, but you know, that, yeah. I, I didn't want to ask for too much time. I just wanted to. Leave yeah, I appreciate. It. I, I am in the midst of. Uh, <laughs> I've I'm got much many deadlines right now. Oh, I'm me. sure. <clears throat> I'm sure you do. But um, I appreciate the you know your interest. And and your dedication, and that's uh, you know I, I I'm happy to honor that. Well, I, I hope there's a lot. I, I hope this inspires a lot of younger people to be inspired by the good old days. Of the, you know, because the thing is, it's like yes, times are good now, and we got you know, a big future to look forward to. But but you know, it's it's because of the things of yesterday that made the things of today, and that's that's yes, uh, that's right. And that's why I am more than happy to and very inspired to be able to do a, like something like this with you because. You know, it it, it uh, it's getting the word out that you know good things are still happening. You know, and and good people like yourself are are still out there trying to kind of make the most out of what you can out of life, and that's that's all that matters. You know, as far as I'm yeah, concerned, I'm, I'm with you. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. High five. Oh yes. Well, thank <laughs> you. Last. Well, thank you very much. All right. Much, thank Judy. you very much, and uh, good luck with everything. All right. Yeah. You take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs>
That was Judy Belushi. I will just call her Judy Belushi, even though her last name is changed now uh, because she married somebody else uh, after jo- many a uh, few years after John died. But uh, Judy Belushi, uh, the late or the wife of the late great John Belushi. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, simple little interview. That's all that this was going to be. Uh, I know a lot of people wanted you know to know probably every question there was in the book, but you know what? If you want to know all the questions, do what I did. I go try to get a hold of uh, Judy Belushi like I did, and she'll probably be more than happy to answer whatever question you have. But uh, I just wanted something simple just to say, hey, I've done it. I, I did an interview. I'm happy. I uh, got a guest for the show, for this blues uh, edition of the Frankie Slauson Show tonight, and uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed that. So with that being said, we'll be right back with some more uh, great bluesy music here on the Frankie Slauson Show right here on KTQ. 91.3 FM, here where great guests come alive. <laughs> Alrighty, we'll see you guys after this quick commercial break. <laughs> 